From the world of medical science, antisense oligonucleotide therapy may be tough words to say, but three scientists are expecting that it's going to be even tougher on the familial form of amyotrophic lateral sclerosis, better known as Lou Gehrig's disease. The research team of doctors Frank Bennett, Don Cleveland, and Richard Smith is proving to the medical world that antisense technology is the science that can become the new paradigm for treating ALS in the 21st century. What our drugs do is bind to the RNA instead of the protein like most other drugs do. And by binding to the RNA, they prevent production of the protein product. Therefore, instead of targeting proteins like most other drugs, what we're doing is preventing the synthesis of the protein, so we prevent uh, these disease-causing proteins from ever being made. The breakthrough therapy that attacks the SOD1 gene responsible for a portion of the inherited form of ALS is made possible through a powerful and unique collaboration. The development of this uh, DNA drug therapy for ALS is really an unusual partnership of a trio of groups, a research team at the University of California, the corporate team at ISIS, and a very courageous philanthropic team at the ALS Association who underwrote this effort in the early stages when, when success really was not so clear-cut. The story of antisense oligonucleotide therapy, or ASO, has all the twists and turns of a blockbuster Hollywood script, beginning when Dr. Richard Smith first recognized its hidden potential. As a physician taking care of ALS patients, I'd been looking for a long time for means of treating the disease and when the first description of a familial form of the disease was recognized in 1993, then I thought, well, we have a target and the and antisense might be a way of actually treating the disorder. When Dr. Smith first presented the SOD1 opportunity to me, I thought it had some very good scientific rationale and it was one of these opportunities you receive, what if? Uh, you know, this is true, and we can make a big difference in, in these patients' lives. The project initiated when Richard Smith introduced himself to me, proposed this idea, and I was not impressed initially. And Richard proposed it again, and he proposed it again, and he proposed it again. It just became easier to do the experiment than to listen to Richard again. When I first approached Dr. Cleveland, he rightfully thought that this was very improbable but that something like this would work. It would have been perfectly reasonable for the company or for Dr. Cleveland at the university to say, you know, this is just too challenging, let's just drop it. But remarkably, just when I started even myself to wonder whether we'd be able to continue, we, we had a result that, uh, that was successful and kept the, the whole thing in motion. Further studies are currently being conducted to enhance the effectiveness of the therapy before beginning the next round of clinical trials in the very near future. And so far, the doctors are giving its progress a big thumbs up. Prior efforts at therapy in ALS have tried to make the neurons whose premature death causes the paralysis, has tried to make those neurons healthier, uh, more normal, feeding them factors that allow them to survive longer. But that's not really the basis that underlies the real disease process. Because we know the exact gene, we know it does something toxic, something bad, and we know how to silence that gene, our approach really is directly on what is causative of disease, and that gives us real optimism that we can change the disease course. What the ultimate outcome of ASO therapy will be, only time will tell. But based on the promising early results, we may be witnessing a momentous step forward in the battle being waged against ALS.